Next speaker. Juan Kitchen. Jesus Serrano. Crystal Castillo. Is this Crystal? Okay. I think you have my daughter's name. She's only 15. I'm Nerissa Castell. You have my daughter's name. My name is Nerissa Castell, 21 North 13th Street in the Walk. Now, I'm here on behalf of Science Park High School and the seniors there. I have a son who's graduating as a senior at Science Park, and we are not happy as parents. They have raised the most money any senior class at Science Park has ever raised. $40,000 right up to the time they dismissed their uh, senior advisor. You all say it's personnel. I said it's personnel. It's different. I think it's an issue with an egoistic pig who you have there as a principal, who does not know his limits, who does not want to respect the parents, who does not respect the children, who don't, according to him, and I quote, I don't care a damn about these kids. I care about my wife and my son. I go home to them. Why is he there as principal when he does not care a damn about my son? I am the first educator to my kids. I homeschool my kids for a year. And when my son went into the, the, uh, high, the public schools to take the, uh, the uh, NJS HESPA exam, he was advanced proficient on homeschooling. Now, Ms. Taylor was there, he was great. This principal came in. Teachers are scared to do what they're supposed to do. Teachers are getting fired left and right for no particular reason except personal issues he have with them. And children are suffering. I am fed up, I am tired, I'm, I am so mad as a parent that my child, children of Newark are suffering this way in a school that is a blue ribbon school that always had, had had high standards and are now failing. It is disappointing. It is disgusting. I'm sure, Mr. Janey, you will not have your children going to a school where they are not properly educated. They're already black and they're already poor. It's against them. We want our children educated, highly educated. Mr. Janey, I am begging you. I am asking you to please raise the standards in our school for our children. They're the ones that are suffering, not you. You wouldn't make your children suffer the way you're having our children suffer, and I don't appreciate it. There's so much I want to say tonight, but I respect you all, I respect myself, I respect the parents here, and especially the children. You don't know the half of it. People are sending you letters, you're not responding to the letters. Why? We complain, we sent you letters, we came down to the board. You never met with us, Mr. Janey. How do you expect this school system to move forward when you, as the leader, do not want to take responsibility when it comes to our children? Where does the responsibility lie? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Castillo. I think it may be useful just because I want people to understand that when you attack individuals that you, there's legal implications to that. I think I'm going to ask the board attorney to simply read from the defamation policy. I, I just want people to understand so that have that in mind and you say what you feel you need to say. Uh, but we got to be careful when we defame people's characters. It, it, could, it could ground litigation. I just want folks to be careful about slander and defamation. Next speaker. Roberto Cabanas. Louise Roundtree. Louise 
Roundtree, 3 Marshall Street, Irvington. I'm here representing the student assistance coordinators in the Newark Public Schools. We are very, very concerned that Newark Public Schools administration has made staffing and budget decisions for the next school year with very little information, especially in regard to the elimination of the SAC position and the 40 SACs currently employed in the Newark Public Schools. According to the letter that Joe Del Grasso wrote to Dr. Jandy on April 9th, it was stated in the paragraph regarding elimination of SAC. SAC positions, I quote, at a meeting with your senior administrators, the NTU was told that this has already occurred in many districts, end of quote. This is absolutely not true. ASAP New Jersey, the SAC's State Professional Association, has been monitoring the 2010-11 budgetary modifications in all New Jersey districts. Most districts have done absolutely nothing with regard to their vital SACs. Some districts have reduced the number of SACs with their new budget while also reducing the number of other instructional support service staff members, such as your school counselors, social workers, etc. ASAP New Jersey just learned that in several districts where SACs were rift, that they have been reinstated for the next school year. Why do you think that that was the case? We have SACs right in this room from around the state. We have Hudson County, Passaic County, Morris County. Now, I'd just like for you to please stand in support of the SACs, all the SACs in this room, please stand. Middlesex County and other Essex County districts who have not, who have not been eliminated. We would like to take this moment to acknowledge all and, and thank you for your support, for coming out to support the SACs here in Newark. Thank you. <clears throat> Sir, we'd like to represent to you 2,200 plus signatures collected from Newark public school stakeholders, such as our students, staff members, parents, and community members. We thank you all. That have already been faxed to the superintendent's office, supporting the reinstatement of the SAC position and the services that we as SACs provide to our students. You see the support here from the state and from our community this evening. So the questions are, where do you stand in acknowledging the needs of our students, our families, our communities in the Newark public school, in the Newark public school area? And how are you? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roundtree. Next speaker. Thomas, Thomas Ellis. Paul Fernandez. There, we, there you go. Good evening. My name is Paul Fernandez. I live in Union, New Jersey, and I appreciate you uh, letting me speak because I am not a resident of Newark. But what I am is a retired police officer from the city of East Orange. I'm the Municipal Drug Alliance Coordinator for the Township of Union, and I work for Summit Oaks Hospital, which is a psychiatric and chemical dependency facility. And I bring this up because I've seen addiction and mental illness at the street level as a police officer and the prevention level at the Municipal Drug Alliance and at the treatment level in the facility I work at now. And I'm here to support the SACs because it's a very important position. And I know that money is tight and I know there's gonna be very, very hard cuts to make, but cutting the SACs is not the place to do it. Um, if I may, I'd like to just make an effort to uh, promote this with a little bit of a story. There was this farmer and his horse. And every day this farmer would take his horse and he'd go out in the field and he'd make the horse plow 
the acres of land, and he'd come back and he'd give that horse two bags of oats. And he was talking to his friend one time and said, you know, I could save some money by cutting him down to one bag. And that's what he did. And every day that horse would go out there and he'd plow that field and he'd come back and he'd get his bag of oats. And when he saw his friend again, he said, how's that working out? He says, it's working out really good. And you know, I could even save more money by dropping it down to a half a bag of oats, which he did. And the horse went out there every day and plowed the field. Well, after a week, he found his friend and him sitting there having a cup of coffee. And he says, how's that working? And he says, you know, I had the horse almost eating nothing, and he died. Well, before a tragedy beholds the school, sure, it'll work by laying off the sacks and laying off the teachers, and the school will run fine for a while. But eventually, the horse will die. Let's not let that happen. Next speaker. Yvonne Matone. Sharon Smith. Good evening, my name is Sharon Smith. I live at 290 Jellif Avenue, Newark, New Jersey, 07108. I am the past president of Belmont Ryan PTA, um, past parent representative for the SLC at Belmont Ryan, and I'm the executive director of Parents United for Local School Education. I'm here today regarding a letter that I sent to Superintendent Janey on May 13 in regards to the transferring of Belmont Runyon rising sixth graders to Arts High School. Um, it appears to me that there is either some planning or no planning at all regarding the transfer of any students to Arts High. Um, there is a proverb that says, without a plan, men, man will perish. Um, unless we're looking towards making sure that our children are achieving what they can achieve in the South Ward and at Belmont Runyon, we need to pay attention to how we are planning to take care of them. Okay. I need to give a little history about why I am really concerned. In 2007, 2008, you were just beginning your superintendency, and the children of Belmont Runyon at that time, the fourth graders, were being transferred to Brown Academy. Parents stood up and said that they did not want their children to be transferred. We spoke to Ms. King at that time. Um, the building was old. These were our um, complaints. The building was old. The children were not passing AYP, and the environment wasn't safe. Then also we were told that the kids were going to be located on an isolated floor. Then one year later, Brown was closed for the building is old, it was not at capacity, and the children was not passing AYP. So, now we're in a move where we're going to move our sixth graders to a high school. Parents are concerned about the fact that their young children will be um, in the environment of high schoolers. One concern also is that it's only for four months. It's only for four months that you're moving these kids from Belmont to Arts High. Why can't they stay at Belmont Runyon? Secondly, <laughs> Belmont Runyon is an old school and it has a lot of damages to it. We would like to find out what is the facilities report. And if you're going to move kids into the building, in this old building, there's asbestos, there's lead. Our children should not be put in that environment. It's unsafe. We need the same consideration for our kids that you gave to the kids at Wilson Avenue. Their kids were moved from a school into another location to they can migrate over to their other grades from 6th, 7th, and 8th. 
We need the same kind of consideration. Our kids should not be put in a building four months later and continue instruction so that the other grades can go in there. We need to think about the transferring of students from year to year. We have a research here that says that there are, for, at Practical Solutions, students who experience single or multiple transfers in a school year should receive particular attention because they are likely to have discipline and performance problem. Take a look at the kids that you transferred to Maple. Take a look at the kids that you've transferred to Avon. There are problems there. We need to pay attention to our kids. These are the kids that are the lowest performing in the district. We need to take care of them. We need to make sure that our decisions are wise when we are planning for them. <clears throat> I'm going to ask the superintendent uh, to meet with Ms. Smith. Uh, we have several people who have concerns about the transfer from Belmont Runyon. Any uh, folks who have those concerns, please meet after the district. Uh, there will be someone from the district here to talk more to you about that uh, because the district does have a plan um, in, terms of, in terms of that transfer, and I think it's important uh, for folks to understand that. Uh, Dr. Jane, could you say a quick word about that? Because I do think it's important for people out here to hear for about 30 seconds, some of the purposes in terms of why the kids at Belmont, who otherwise would be at Brown, are being linked with arts. So just a very quick word I think is important for the people. Yes, Brown, Brown Academy uh, is a building that's not ready to be occupied by anybody. Uh, the state has the responsibility to renovate our buildings. We do not. We could if we had the money coming from the state to renovate our buildings in terms of safety and hygiene. Because it was not ready, the plan called for them to be in a special wing of Arts High School. Um, there is a plan, and we would be happy to share that plan with you uh, this evening and other dates as we go forward. So there'll be follow-up after this meeting and, and, as the superintendent said, additional meetings. Next, next speaker. I'm sorry, Ms. Smith, we have a list of speakers. If, if Vice Chair King wants to say a word, we'll turn over to uh, Ms. King. Yes, I just want to say thank you, Ms. Smith, for recognizing that every time you call, that's why you met with me at school. And I just want to say when uh, Dr. Janey and the meet in reference to Belmont Runyon, I would like to be there. Okay. So, Ms. Ms. Smith. Okay, thank, thank you, Ms. Smith. We have a long list of speakers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Smith. Uh, next speaker, please. Johnny Latner. He's coming. Brenda Hoffler Battle. He's coming. He's coming. Oh, he's, he's, he's coming. Uh, we, we have Mr. Leitner. So, Ms. Ms. Battle, uh, we'll, we'll go to Mr. Leitner first. Good afternoon. Um, Johnny Latner, 569 Martin Luther King Boulevard. <clears throat> Tonight I have um, three concerns. And my first concern is Speedway Avenue School. As you know, um, Dr. Janey, um, we had a community meeting there on February 3rd. We had a follow-up meeting April 5th with some stakeholders, um, with the SDA and with the county, the city, MPS. Um, and about three weeks ago, I sent you an email and forwarded some of the board members in reference to the Speedway Avenue School and the situation with Speedway Avenue School. We have yet to um, hear a follow-up in reference to Speedway Avenue School. Um, what's going to happen before September? Um, the community, the parent, associate, the PTO there um, would like to have a community meeting. Um, they have, they are in the process now of scheduling a community meeting, which will be June 10th. Um, so, you know, I just want to let you know that publicly. My second concern was Belmont Runyon and the lighting situation um, around Belmont Runyon, which now um, I have to say to Steve Molino, thank you for 
lighting up the lights around Belmont Vineyard because it was really dark. And to um, Mr. Freeman, in reference to the cameras, you know, since he thought that I, I don't know, I think he thought I was crazy or something. But um, he, you know, responded as if I didn't know what I was talking about, but hopefully that's, that situation has started. Um, and then my third, God, that was a quick three minutes. Um, my third thing is in reference to the subject of abuse counselors. Also, as everyone said, I hope that you don't take that out of the budget. Um, as you know, um, this past Saturday, it was 35,000 people at the State House, um, and we took about 10 buses down to Trenton from Newark to help to participate in that rally. So we're fighting with you. We're not fighting against you. But we want to know that, you know, hopefully that some of, not only the SAC counselors, but other jobs can be saved. And um, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Lightman. Next speaker. Brenda Battle. Good evening. My name is Brenda Hoffler Battle, 1242B North Broad Street, Hillside, New Jersey. I'm also here representing the SACS and North Public Schools. We are very concerned that North Public Schools Administration has made staffing and budget decisions for the next year with very little information such as what is required to become a certified New Jersey Department of Education SAC, to perform all the duties of a SAC, as stated earlier by one of my other colleagues. It was also stated in the 4910 letter from Joe Del Grasso to Dr. Janey, quote, the main specific statutory and regulatory responsibilities which Newark's hardworking and dedicated tax have diligently and successfully addressed over the year will now fall on the shoulders of already overworked guidance counselors and social workers. We were told that the district will ensure that these professionals will be provided professional development, end quote. We are concerned that you, do, you are not aware for that for a person to become a New Jersey Department of Education certified SAC, there are many pieces to that person must do. One of them is, quote, complete graduate study at a New Jersey State approved program with a range of 21 to 27 semester hour credits in the following areas required. Number one, fundamentals of drug and alcohol abuse, dependency and the related problems. Two, child and adolescent development, including research-based risk, protective and resiliency factors for students at risk for school failure. Three, curriculum planning, implementation and staff development in chemical health education. Four, coordination, delivery, intervention and referral services in a school setting including multidisciplinary and intervention teams. Five, assessment and counseling of drug and alcohol affected students and their families. Six, coordination of research-based prevention programs, services in school and community settings. Seven, school culture and the dynamics of policy and program development. A college supervised SAC cur curriculum. Shame on you for eliminating our department. How are you going to ensure 315 to 405 professional development hours this summer to adequately prepare staff to fulfill the New Jersey statutes and the responsibility of the SACs for the services we provide for our students and community? Again, shame on you. Thank you, Ms. Battle. Uh, next speaker. Carol Churgan. Good evening, everyone. I'm Carol Jurgen from 11 Crestmont Road, West Orange, New Jersey. I'm also here representing the SACs in North Public Schools. I know you've already heard how concerned we are that you've made some decisions about eliminating the SAC position and the 40 SACs in Newark. And we're concerned that you are not aware of the New Jersey Department of Education's stance on the SAC position and the supporting New Jersey statute and administrative code. Recently, 
The New Jersey DOE sent all of the New Jersey No Child Left Behind project directors the response to the question that one district asked. Quote, is it mandatory for a school district to have a substance awareness coordinator slash student assistance coordinator? End quote. In the interest of time, I'm going to just read the most pertinent um, parts of the New Jersey DOE's response. Quote, school districts are not mandated to employ student assistance coordinators. Although many do, approximately 400 SACs are employed by New Jersey schools, and you saw several of them here tonight. However, all school districts must fulfill the responsibilities or functions for students assistance coordinators, SACs, established by New Jersey statute. It is difficult to see how this district coordination role could be performed as intended by the legislature without employing a SAC in the position. When districts choose not to employ a SAC, it is strongly recommended that they have a written plan documenting how they fulfill the SAC requirements, particularly for New Jersey QSAC purposes. According to New Jersey statute and administrative code, each school district is required to have and fulfill the requirements for comprehensive school, excuse me, comprehensive alcohol, tobacco, and other drug abuse programs procedures for alcohol and other drug abuse intervention, law enforcement operations for alcohol, other drugs, weapons and safety and intervention and referral services. As part of this comprehensive program, pursuant to New Jersey statute, each school district is required to fulfill the requirements slash functions of a student assistance coordinator SAC position. As the title implies, the position is intended as a coordinating role and is meant to assist school districts in the effective implementation of the requirements of New Jersey statute and administrative code. Therefore, the SAC position slash functions are not intended primarily as a counseling role. End quote. The SAC is not the same thing as a school counselor or your social worker. So, the question becomes, how can Newark Public Schools fulfill the responsibility? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Churgan. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next speaker. Terrell Proctor. Good evening. I'm Terrell Proctor, 53-85 Mountain View Avenue, Newark. I'm also here to represent the SACs in Newark Public Schools. We are very concerned that NPS administration has eliminated 40 SAC positions without careful consideration to what services we provide, especially after we read the April, 20, uh, April 1st, 2010 Washington Post article called Jamie. It's not a coup written by educator reporter Bill Turk. This article references a school reform meeting Dr. Janey was at on March 31st at the Wilson Building located in Washington, D.C. In the interest of time, I can't read the whole article, so I'm only going to quote pieces directly related to the significant work the SACs in our community are dedicated to do, such as the wraparound process, which includes professional supports, natural supports, community members, and community resources. According to the article, quote, Janie said, a laser focus on test scores and achievement gaps writes off crucial links between school, home, and community, and the potential contributions of parents, end quote. Well, guess what, Dr. Janie? This is exactly what SACs do. <laughs> quote, Citing research, Janie said just 13% of a child's academic progress is attributed to what goes on in the classroom, and 7% is driven by school leadership, while a whopping 80%, he said, is a function of what happens within the family and the community. End quote. Well, guess what, Dr. Janie? This is also what SACs do. We heard many testimonies of people talk ex explicitly about just that. 
Dr. Janey said, quote, it stuns me that people just don't get it. Much like attendance and truancy, looking at the achievement gap shall only begin to raise other more fundamental issues about the lack of connection between schools, families, and communities, end quote. There are only 40 sacks to address these issues in Newark. Come June 30th of this calendar year, there will be none. School counselors and social workers are so busy following their guidelines for their department, they can't possibly wholeheartedly target that 80% benchmark that Dr. Janey mentioned. Thus, the question remains, who is going to address that 80% void in the academic progress of North Public Schools? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. Sharon Brown. Good evening. I'm Sharon Brown from West Side Naf Academy. I'm an 11th grader, and my sack is Mr. Jamie Lugo, and I'm talking about the SACS. Um, the SACS program has helped me a lot. In my past, I had problems with stealing, parents on drugs, friends with drug abuse, getting expelled from school, fights. My mother is a recovery, and now a counselor of the same program, and which helped recognize the importance of the SACS in the community. These sessions, like counseling and others, have gave me a different perspective on life. Every day, students are faced with a decision. Should they use drugs or should they help? As individuals, and to be honest, as my set, Mr. Jamie Lugo, have helped me with a lot of better choices. The counselors in our school barely pay any attention to us. They only pay attention to the grades or summer school. The sex has actually helped us as individuals in work in our community and not only for if we fail school or not. So I feel as though that it's very unfair to cut, these, cut the sex in the program. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Nikisha Brown. Good evening. My name is Nikisha Brown, and um, I am the mother of Sharon Brown. I'm also a resident at 781 Sanford Avenue, apartment 308 of North New Jersey. Um, I come to you as a teen mother as a recovering addict, and now as a counselor, to let you know how important it is to keep the sacks at the school. My daughter spoke to you a little bit about her history, the domestic violence that happened in my home, her continued violence at school, her lack of motivation to even participate, and then me. The greatest regret of all is that they tell you that you should not counsel your own kids. I tried to do that on my own with no type of help or guidance from my daughter to try to give her the intuition to please do better in school. Many days going to the school, I might have went to the school three or four times in a month. And then she met Jamie Lugo, which stepped in and helped my daughter. My daughter now is involved in debating. My daughter has now a part-time job for the city of Newark, for the Greater Newark Conservative, where she helped the environment. Her guidance counselor, she couldn't have gave her this because she got her own work. Now you're saying me you don't know what you're going to do, and that to me is like passing the buck. You're just going to give somebody else the work that the sex could do when you have the already trained individuals to do it? Do you care? As a counselor, I see these children's parents every day. And I hope that you reconsider and think about it, that these same kids will be on my caseload if you don't think about what you're doing. 
I enjoy being a counselor, but if I see one less kid on my caseload, I'll be fine with that. Think about what you're doing. Think about Sharon. Think about how that she's not using drugs, that she's not stealing anymore, that she's going to school every day. And think about that you have caring people like Jamie that call my house, that come to the school, that give referrals, that will show up at the hospital to make sure she's getting counseling. Do you think that the guidance counselors, with all the work that they're already doing now, is going to be able to facilitate this type of activity? No. So I want you to think about that, and I want you to look at my daughter and see if you think that she deserved this type of help. Look at her. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. I want to say real quick, the district is beyond committed to making sure that the children receive the services they need given what they face. And the superintendent is working with his staff to come up with a plan to make sure that despite these cuts, the children receive the services they need that are holistic given the range of needs they have. I do think it's important though to make sure we direct this energy to the right place. When the governor decided to cut $42 million from our budget, that left a $77 million gap. And so obviously very difficult decisions had to be made. And so we all have to step up. Guidance counselors, social workers are going to have to step up. The superintendent and his team is going, to fi is going to have a plan to make sure that despite these cuts, the children with these needs have those needs met. And so I want to emphasize that, because that's what we're all here uh, 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 to, to, to focus on. Uh, Ms. Spade. Um, good evening once again. In reference to the SAC positions, um, well, over the l last couple of weeks, I've had students um, approach me in reference to um, how they were helped um, from SAC coordinators. And after tonight, seeing the long list of SAC representatives that are here, I do realize more how important um, that pos those positions are. And one of my questions is, how, how are we um, going to help, how are these positions going to be filled, being that it's eliminated? How are they going to be filled with experienced people that have the knowledge of knowing how to deal with these kids? And is it, and I know we answered, I know you answered some of the questions, Shavar, but in ref, being that this list is so long with SAC positions and SAC issues, is there any way that we can answer some of these questions? Because now I, have, I do have that question, because I know kids that are being helped, not just me, but I know, you know, it's throughout the district that are being helped with these SAC positions, and how can we help them? How are we going to do that? That's right. What will happen, um, just spoke with the superintendent, at our June board meeting, the superintendent will present to the people a plan for how the needs of the children that, that were formally addressed by the SACs, how they, how they will be addressed going forward, uh, given the cuts that, uh, that the district had to make. Um, so th these are very important questions. These are very legitimate questions. Obviously, we have children who have very serious needs. We have to make sure those needs are met. Uh, the district will present a plan uh, at the June board meeting about how we're going to go about doing that. Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Mr. 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 Lewis. I want to um, also uh, piggyback off Ms. Spade and say I understand how important a SAC coordinator is. Because at Arts High School, it was a SAC coordinator that's sitting in that third row right there. <laughs> who, who, even though I could fool a lot of people in Arts High School, I couldn't fool him. He knew what I was doing. He knew how I was doing it. And he was a mentor to not just me, but all of the students who I shared the classroom with, I shared the school with. And I believe that these people are very important to our community because we have so many students in our schools who have parents that's hooked on drugs, who have parents that will have issues, and they need someone to talk to. And these SAC coordinators are the people that they can come to and talk to. Because after I spoke to my SAC coordinator, he helped me uh, stop smoking, blacking mouths, trying to be like everybody else. 
and he also encouraged me to change my life around. So I want to say that these SAC coordinators have my support publicly. Next speaker. David Johnson. Sharon Arose. Good evening. My name is Sharon Orris, um, 402 Park Place Avenue, Bradley Beach, New Jersey. Uh, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am uh, the supervisor of the Office of Safe and Drug-Free Schools here in the Newark Public Schools. And um, as you know, uh, the SACs have been eliminated, and all of them have been eliminated. It is not the kind of thing where, in most districts around the state, where some SACs may have been eliminated initially in districts because of the budget cuts from Governor Christie, but in this district, there was a choice made to eliminate all. Um, in New Jersey, we are lucky enough to have administrative code that gives us a lot of direction around what it is that schools are required to do around prevention, education, and intervention. And uh, many years ago, in 1985, when I was a SAC way back then, is when the certification for SACs was developed by the Department of Ed. And it was developed because this is a specialty area. It is not an area that is meant to be done by just anybody working in a school. And although I have great respect for school counselors and social workers, I am a social worker myself. Just being those kinds of positions does not mean that you are qualified in any way, shape, or form to perform the duties that a SAC performs. So a plan that includes giving the responsibilities over to those folks, I will tell you right now, is a dangerous plan, and it is not one that is going to serve our students well. Um, the problem is, is that um, those folks have jobs already, like others have said here, and there is a reason why there is a certification, and there is a reason why um, districts do not get rid of all of their staff when they have budget cuts. Now, as you know, in a district where our kids are bombarded with uh, community behavior that favors drug use, it's very important for us to do something. And I was asked by a member of the uh, executive staff uh, a while back ago, are 90% all, are of our children on drugs? And thank goodness I say to you, no, but they will be if we do not do the right thing here. So please do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hector Rios. Good evening, everybody. My name is Hector Rios. I'm a lifetime resident of the city of Newark and proud of it. I have a scripted uh, document here, but I'd like to start off with uh, saying one thing to you all who may not be aware of this. SACs make their own money. And as I go along in my script, you'll find out how. We should be very concerned that the Newark Public School Administration has eliminated the SAC position without knowing history and importance of our SACs, as well as ignoring our ability to acquire federal federal monies that student assistance coordinator teams have brought to the district. The SAC position is a New Jersey Department of Education certified position. New Jersey has been leading the United States in student assistance since 1987, when student assistance services were mandated by the state legislature, and subsequently the student assistance position was created. It wasn't until 2001 that the federal government acknowledged the merits of New Jersey's work in the student assistance field and proceeded to create the Middle School Drug Prevention and School Safety Coordinator, otherwise known as the MSCs, position. Through a $3 million competitive grant, the Newark Public Schools was able to establish eight middle school coordinators. During the three-year life of the MSC grant, the federal government realized that the MSC role was required across grades 
uh, grades K through 12, and they changed the position to National Drug Prevention and School Safety Coordinator. With these funds, the MSCs, former SACs, were able to find, finally document the need for $7.7 7 .7 million awarded to the Newark Public Schools in the fall of 2005 via the discretionary federal grant known as Safe Schools Healthy Students Initiative. This grant was not used to fund the 32 SACs already in place in Newark Public Schools in 2005. The $7.7 .7 million was used for multiple purposes within the Newark Public Schools community. Some, example, in, some examples include additional SACs as well as social workers and attendance officers for, uh, for alternative education and the Truancy Task Force. The Office of Security Services received funds to purchase additional security, security camera equipment and two-way radios for all schools. These funds were also used to provide additional support to the Office of Early Childhood and their 100 plus early childhood centers. We provided funds to significant community partners, too many to list here this evening. The Safe Schools Healthy Students Grant enables SACs to make a positive and lasting impact linking our students, schools, families, and communities. Since the federal government, government is no longer providing enti entitlement funds, the Safe Schools Healthy Students model has become the foundation for the competitive grants offered by Federal Office of Safe and Drug Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rios. <clears throat> Next speaker. Hashim Garrett. Deborah Harrison. Tanya Robinson. Ted Anua. Cassandra Terrell. Aura Davis. Good evening. My name is Aura Davis. I live 429 South 9th Street, Nook, for 45 years. And I've been coming to the board meetings for that length of time. And it's to the superintendent and all on the roster. I've listened all night to everything everyone had to say. And it's, it surprises me that we go over this, we've been going over this for years. We do everything except try to get our kids a better education. Things sound so good, what you're saying, and it's on paper and it's talked about everywhere. But things that are not broken, we shouldn't fix. I'm, I'm on behalf of Harriet Tubman School. We've been asked to lay off some teachers at Harriet Tubman. It's a very small school and it's a blue, blue ribbon school. Not only do I talk for Harriet Tubman, I go to Camden Middle too because I go to different schools. And I'm sure half of you on the stage haven't been in the school, not come as a dignitary but just come surprise, or just walk in and see how our children are doing. We have children in the school from every walk of life and sometimes I cry because I don't think I'll live to see the day when our kids are being treated equal. I've gone to Trenton and sat there and looked and everything around the table, it's not us. And they sit out in the other communities and make determination what should go on in the new school system. And it's sad. You're sitting on the stage and you have the authority, I hope you do, to do some things. I was here when the state came in in 1985. I sat on the new educational committee with Sister Holder. I've been around a long time. And everything is almost the same but our children are still being neglected. And I guess I'll be dead and in my grave 
before we get the new school that we have fought for for 25 years at Harriet Tubman. And I just wish that it had been on the list that I read in the paper just a few days ago. <coughs> we have three new schools coming up down in the neck and one at Alma Flag. you're working with her. And we are in a new school today. And our school has been on the board for the last 20 years. And we don't have a school yet. Thank you for listening. But please don't take the children, the teachers from Harriet School. I know that the budget has to be cut. Because in our home, sometimes we have to cut in the food department. <laughs> but please don't cut the teachers at Harriet School. At no school, all our children need the teachers. I know there's fluff everywhere. I know there's some that can be removed. But leave that school intact. It was a red school house before the school. It has always been a good My elders are gone. Ms. Ms. Davis, thank you. And I'm always going to let the elders <clears throat> get a little bit more time. I'm always let the elders get a bit more time. So, so if anybody see discrimination, that was purposeful. Elders always get more time while I'm on this mic. So thank you very much, Ms. Davis, for your, for your very important, heartfelt comments. Next speaker. Natasha um, Akinyeli. My name's Natasha Akinyele, and I'm here representing Harriet Tubman National Blue Ribbon School. We are located in the heart of the community, but we are working to get to the core of education and learning. I'm here for three reasons. The first one is to talk about our school. Harriet Tubman is a wonderful school with strong parents who are ready to organize and be active. We have an outstanding principal, Deborah Terrell, who's leading a supportive and dedicated staff. We are a blue ribbon school, yet we have very little resources, like Ms. Davis said. We've been fighting for a school for 15 to 20 years. It's ridiculous. The second reason I'm here is to talk about the effects of the budget cuts on our schools. And when we say our schools, we just don't mean Harriet Tubman. We mean all of Newark Public Schools. When you cut things like important tenured teachers, we're going to see increases in class size. What happens when we have increases in class size? There's less attention given to the students because we're going to have more issues with discipline. At our school, we're going to see grade cuts. So instead of having three second grade class, we're going to have two. But what's important is in third grade, we start testing. And those tests are what put us on the mat. But the issue is you're cutting teachers so we can't prepare our schools. You want to hold teachers accountable, but we're not being accountable. The third thing is to Dr. Janey. This is an appeal to you to stand up and fight for our schools, our teachers, and what's going on in the community. I'm hearing from our parents at Harry Tubman that, and I see from other schools, you're not present in the schools. We need you to stand up and publicly fight for North Public Schools. We need more support, and this is the message for teachers and all those people hired by North public schools. Stop complaining about what people are doing or not doing and get active and hold everybody accountable. Thank you very much. Harriet Tubman, National Blue Ribbon School. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Akinelli. Next speaker. Mr. Jeffrey. Uh, Mr. Lewis. Last year I had the privilege to uh, attend your uh, Harriet Tubman uh, Daddy Read to Me Day where the fathers came together and different men in the community came together and read to the children at Harry Tubman School. And um, I was able to talk to some parents and teachers and community people in that community who said, 
what about me? What about Harriet Tubman? We see all these schools that are being built up and failing, they failing, but Harriet Tubman had been consistently uh, progressing and progressing, and they still haven't got what they deserve. And I will say the same thing that I said to you last year, that when the time is right, and when we have the money to build something for people that deserve it, I will make sure that Harriet Tubman is at the top of the list because it's long overdue. And I am with you, it's long overdue because Harriet Tubman have earned that right. Yeah, and the, and the reality is the state was supposed to build new schools for Newark a long time ago, right? So, so that's a whole separate issue in terms of enforcement uh, of, the, of the Abbott remedies. Next speaker. Onel Gonzalez. Good afternoon. My name is Onel Gonzalez, and I am currently a eighth grade student at Rafael Hernandez School. I am proud and humbled by the opportunity of being here to speak to you today. SAC, SAC, as some might call, the Student Assistance Coordinator Team. SAC. SAC has provided the students of Newark the availability of having well-trained and trustworthy individuals in their school buildings. It is imperative for children and young adults to have positive role models that they can trust and approach at any time. SAC has provided this to us. Unfortunately, it has been brought to my attention that the SAC program is going to be eliminated from our school buildings. This will not be this would not only be devastating, but detrimental for hundreds of children that have benefited from this program. First and foremost, the SAC team consists of highly qualified, trustworthy individuals trained to recognize red flag signs that identify drug use in students and students that have been victimized by, by bullying. From my perspective, I believe the drug and bullying rate of the kids would increase by a major rate if the SAC team is removed from our school buildings. Moreover, through the SAC team, through the SAC team, students have mentors to count on if they ever need someone to talk to and they don't have to worry about exposure of their personal business because everything that is said to a SAC is completely confidential. If SAC is taken away, where will we go? In addition, we want to make sure that our students at an elementary and a middle school level have, have been effectively influenced by programs such as SAC, so when they reach a high school level, students such as myself will feel empowered and prepared to not allow negative influence and peer pressure get the best of them. I know some people might say the SAC team is needed in the high schools, not middle schools, because they are older and they need someone to persuade them. But they are mistaken because students develop a habit of using drugs while in a middle school. And when they get to high school, they are already addicted and have no way nor desire to stop. This is why it is important to, to maintain this team in our middle schools. All in all, the above reasons clearly indicate why SAC is so important to our youth. Now I ask you, can you imagine having a school, a middle school, without a SAC? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Next speaker. Melissa Andrews. Hi. My name is Melissa Andrews, and I'm with Webus Inc., which is a consortium of social service agencies that have been working with Newark Public School SACs. And um, I know everybody's had all these personal stories about the SACs and how valuable they are, but I kind of want to talk about some statistics. Webis is a data tracking system that does case management and tracks services that are provided to the students across different, oh, multiple agencies. And in that time, since we've been working with them in the Safe Schools, Healthy Students grant since fall of 2006, there has been some great achievement. And the progress that the district SACs have made in the last three, in these three years, the number of students who have followed up through services after being referred by SACs have increased by 41%. 86% of students continue with support services after their initial intake. That is a 45% increase in just three years. 
The wait time to receive services after a student is referred by a SAC for services has been reduced from 20 business days to three business days. And these are services such as substance abuse treatment or mental health services. The success of the SACs have, been att have attracted a lot of attention. And a matter of fact, over this summer in 2009, we were asked to, um, to present at the US Department of Education's Office of Safe and a Healthy, um, Safe and Drug-Free Schools at their national conference um, as a model program. And also, the New Jersey DOE at that same conference had um, their support services office expressed great interest in making this program of rapid referral response and WEBIS as a standard for student support services throughout the state of New Jersey. In addition, SAMHSA asked NPS to participate in a staff in service showing how NPS SACs had broken down barriers between agencies and better coordinated student services. Um, I don't know all these personal stories, but numbers really don't lie, and there has been great success with SACs, and it seems federally, and even the state has recognized it, and I find it kind of sad that we've made these great strides, but we're not recognizing the value of the SACs here in your um, district. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Andrews. Next speaker. Cicely Breeden. Good evening, my name is Cicely Breeden and I'm of Hillside, New Jersey, born and raised and educated in Newark, New Jersey. I'm here also representing the SACs of Newark Public Schools. As stated earlier, we are very concerned that the NPS administration has eliminated the SAC position and the 40 SACs with little information. In our district, this is not just a mistake, but it will be a disaster. According to the National Association of Children of Alcoholics, 20% of all children are children of alcoholics and substance abusers. For Newark Public Schools, this is approximately 8,000 students. In addition to anxiety affects another 20% of all students. Delays in diagnosis and treatment and anxiety can lead to depression and substance abuse further. For Newark Public Schools, this is approximately another 8,000 students. Just based on national stats and NPS current enrollment of 39,000, there are at least 16,000 students that are at risk for substance abuse and mental health problems. And our students are faced with an additional risk factor just from living in the inner city as well, such as poverty, community violence, domestic violence, homelessness, gangs, and the increasing rates of HIV and AIDS, sexually transmitted diseases, the incarceration of their parents and other significant family members, grandparents raising our students, lack of parental involvement and supervision, and drug availability in their community. Therefore, there are more than 16,000 students at risk for substance abuse and mental health problems. There are 40 SACs currently to service these 39,000 students across 80 plus schools and 100 early childhood centers serving grades pre-K through 12, special needs departments, alternative eds, as well as students in Newark charter schools. One of the missions of the SACs is to mitigate these risk factors, focusing on substance abuse and violence by providing prevention and intervention referral services. We are concerned with our students. We care about our students. Our goal is to help our students. So I say to you, do, to, uh, do you see that this arbitrary decision to remove the sex will have a lasting and devastating impact on Newark Public Schools? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker. Tamir Crawley. Tijana Patton. Sharon, Sharon Lewis. Hello, my name is Sharon Lewis, living in Newark all my life. I live at 77 Oakland Terrace. And even though I'm young, I heard the word disrespect a lot. And I heard how you said we were being disrespectful, but Dr. Janey just got up and walked while we here to talk to him. 
Now, I'm here to talk about the SAC. I'm not even going to say SAC. Student Assistant Coordinators. That mean they assist the students. That mean they help us. Now me, I can say I don't care about this because I am going to graduate June 29th. I passed the HESPA the first time around. But you know what? But you know what? I got siblings. I got siblings. No, I have siblings. They not done with school yet. They need somebody to assist them. I don't have nothing written down because I live this every day. I see girls just throwing themselves at anybody. If you take that woman away from us, do you know what's going to happen? You think Westside crazy now? Oh, please. When she go, it's going to be even worse. It's going to be even worse. You think teenagers now is off the hook? Please. These people will help us. When you have people, parents, who are addicted to drugs and other things, how could you take the people that listen to them? How could you take them away from us? Now, Dr. Janey, I don't even know you. I've never seen you in my school before. Like, this is my first time actually seeing you in person. Now, I don't, I'm not here to offend nobody, but Ms. Brian, she's done a lot. I'm in a group called the Dream Leaders, and it's the seniors of Westside High School. We are the seniors of Westside High School. We are like big brothers and sisters to the younger children. We done did plays about sex, gang violence, teen pregnancy. You take this woman away, it's, it's over. Like, you take any of them away, it's over. You think that we going crazy now? We gonna go even crazier. And it's sad, it's real sad. I, would die, I doubt very seriously any of y'all got kids that go to North Public Schools. Cause if y'all did, cause if y'all did, y'all wouldn't be treating us like this. Y'all really wouldn't. And y'all really bringing me out my character cause I'm a young Islamic woman. But let me tell y'all something. Y'all do this, not gonna be in a, in a rage. <clears throat> Ms. Ms. Lewis, I hope that you and all of the folks concerned about the, the decision being made with respect to the SACs will be here in June when the district will present the plan to make sure the needs of the students are met. Next speaker. 10-4 Evans. Oh. Valeria Quinones. Deanna Kwamina. Shantae Killingsworth. Termaine Castell. Nerissa Castell. Brenda Fouts. Curtis Fouts. Zamira Rahman. Priscilla Barnett. Deborah Coy, Alfreda Dunson, Antonio Agosto, Betty Brandt, Good evening. Good evening, uh, advisory board. My name is Betty Brandt, and I'm a teacher at Malcolm X Shabazz High School. What I have to say is no disrespect to Dr. Marable. As I stated in last month's advisory board meeting, I really like Dr. Marable, and she's a wonderful person. I'm stating what needs to be said in reference to Malcolm X Shabazz High School. In reference to the CAPA report, it states that the principal, the principal's strengths at Malcolm X Shabazz High School is none. And if you look at your report under 7.2, it will tell you the strengths. Something must be done with Malcolm X Shabazz leadership. We need a principal who is firm, tough, and consistent with the students and thinks out of the box for consequences with the student body. The new leadership must put the student body in check immediately in order to save Shabazz from drowning. Presently, Shabazz is at the worst I have ever seen in the 30 years I have been in the building. Maybe we can have a strong leader to come and clean up Shabazz. I sincerely believe that Shabazz can be saved. 
Otherwise, the teachers should move their classrooms into the halls and stairways to teach the children. On the fourth floor, we have a VP. However, he is pulled in all directions and cannot stay put on the fourth floor. We need him to remain in the academy because things just happen in an instant. Our health and social services coordinator, SAC and head guidance counselor has been eliminated. They have been there in the past when emergencies happen, such as suicide, homelessness, drug and child abuse. The children need their help and the community needs them too. I would like to thank Dr. Talbert and Dr. Willie Friedman for their immediate response to my concerns. And I thank you. Mr. Chair. Tony Allen. Stephen Outing. Marie Allen, I stay 143 Chatwood Avenue. I'm the vice president of the PTO at Belmont Runyon. Mr. Jeffrey, you say a key. You said a key and a very important word: respect. I would like from now on for the advisory board and Mr. Janey to respect the parents of Belmont Runyon. Amen. Before you make a decision, sit down with us. I have a son there that's going to the fifth grade. What kind of shock that I'm going to go through? Well, I would like for you to speak to me and the parents, that kids that's going to the fourth grade or the fifth grade. As a teacher of autistic, I teach autistic kids. There's no way in the world you can come out to Chatham and do what you do to the parents at Belmont Runyon. They won't have it. My parents will not tolerate the disrespect that I have seen since my child been at Belmont Runyon. I'm shocked. Because of your background education, I'm shocked how people, parents at Belmont Runyon are being treated. So I'm asking, have respect for us. Don't assume all of us don't care. I speak for all the parents in the South Ward around Belmont Runyon. So please respect us. Thank you. Thank you. The, the superintendent will follow up you, ma'am, too, to address your concerns about this, the move from Belmont Runyon. As I said before, there'll be some opportunities afterwards. The superintendent will also follow up on the Belmont Runyon, make sure information with the people. Next week. Stephen Outing. Steven. Hello. Try, try it again, uh, Mr. Howdy. Try it again. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, everybody. My name is Stephen Outing. I'm the president of the Intergenerational Youth Organization. I don't want to spend up all my time, and I'm demanding my five minutes with my organization. Dr. Janey, I just want to say to you that we got a lot of work to do. Mr. President of the Advisory Board, we have a lot of work to do. You know, you look at the word docorate. Docorate is of the Latin word that means teacher. So Dr. Janey, you a teacher. We don't need a superintendent that's a bureaucrat a bureaucrat and cares about a bottom line. That's why we have an advisory board and that's why we have a business administrator. And I just want to say to this advisory board, you need to do your homework. You need to open up the books. You need to see how, the what, the where, the money is being spent. Dr. Janey should not be in the bureaucratic business. He's an educator. He need to roll his sleeves up and go to Belmont Runyon and go to Shabazz High School and go to Central High School and all these schools in this district. 
We do not need a bureaucratic superintendent. Now, I heard this young lady talk about this SACS organization and how they're working with 8,000 8, students in the city of Newark. All I know is I see a lot of drugs, I see a lot of guns, I see a lot of violence in our community, and I see this program being cut. You know, as well as I know, that this is socially engineered. You all know this and know what's happening in our community. And you sit idle and do nothing. And you sit up here with your implacable demeanor disrespecting the community. How dare you sit here with your implacable demeanor when you go down to Trenton and you like a flea among elephant. The elephant don't even know to flee in the room. And you sit up here like you have all that in a bag of chips. They don't respect you because you don't respect yourself and you don't respect your people and you don't respect your community. All of you. You need to cut this foolishness out. Shavar, you need to stand up like a man and demand that the state give us our money and stop playing with our children's education. We have a Democratic Assembly. We have a Democratic Senate. Sheila Oliver is from this district. Governor Christie only won by 1,800 votes. He has no damn mandate. And y'all sit here and do nothing while our children are being slaughtered in this district. You know this. It's good, it's good. You know this. He, he's fine. Let him, let him go. He has a couple minutes. He's fine. He's I don't bend my knees, I don't shuffle, and I don't scratch where I don't itch. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice, all of us. They'll do it to me, and they'll do it to your family and your community, too. Miss White, we need more from you. One thing I got to say, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allen. I will say this. I have personally spoken with assembly people and senators to fight for the money, you know, that we're entitled to. There will be legal remedies if the budget is finalized the way it is now. An $80 million gap is very large. If that's what happens on June 30th, there will be legal uh, responses to that, uh, to try to fight for that money. Um, so, so let's not assume, because I'm, I'm here. I'm available. I'm, I'm available. I'm accessible. So if you have concerns and questions, you can reach out to me. Uh, but, but again, let's not assume what people are or are not doing. T let's talk and sit down. We all have the same goals. Everyone up here has the same goal. None of us are up here for any other reason than we want to see children excel and graduate from the very best colleges and universities in this country. We may disagree on various items, and that's great. But we have to at least respect the fact that we're not here for any other reason other than these babies, period. Period. And I really would hope that we can respect one another and work together. The bottom line is we're dealing with the consequences of an $80 million gap. Guess what? When you got to cut $80 million, you got to make decisions, decisions that we wouldn't want to make. But the governor that the people of this state elected made that choice. And we have to deal with the fallout from that. And we're doing the best we can. But I just hope that we can have these conversations with, in a more respectful manner because we all have the same goal. You think we like having to cut these positions? No. You think we like hundreds of teachers having to be cut? No. But we got to deal with the hand that we've been dealt and do the best we can with it. So I appreciate uh, your passion, Mr. Outing. I appreciate your concerns. And just know we're all on the same team trying to fight the same battle. Uh, next, next speaker. Luis Ramos. Gail Muhammad. Dorothy Shepard. Sharon Dades. Mildred Jones. Sierra Hooker. Good afternoon. My name is Sierra Hooker. 
I have an 11-year-old that attempted on my running and a 16-year-old that go to University High School. But today I'm not here on behalf of University. I'm going to be here on the behalf of my 11-year-old that go to Bell my running. I know that you said that you're going to dress us after the end of the um, service. Me as a parent, I don't want to hear nothing if it's not those kids standing at Bell my running. You want to move them all the way down there to that school for four months, and some kids not good with transition. And me, for one, I'm not, so I know my son not. My son is me, and I am my son. I'm here to stand up for my son. So if y'all can't leave them kids there, I know they have two rooms at that building because the principal is sitting back there. They have two rooms at Belmont Runyon for those 51 kids to stay there. And it might not be 51 because I'm 99.9% .9 some kids going to charter school because I've been calling downtown all week speaking to Schiller. I'm not sure if that's you, Miss Smith, you said your name was. I've been calling down there all week speaking to a Miss Smith or somebody. And they said, oh, we don't know what's going on or we'll get back with you. No one got back in touch with me. But the guy, he's sitting over there, he did get in touch with me the other day. I forgot his name, Use Khan, or what's his name? Fix You. He did get back in touch with me and said he'd be here tonight. And I saw he was here tonight. But my whole thing is those kids need to stay at Belmont Runyon because they said the school was going to be open in September last year. It's not open. Now you're telling me Jan January. I go past it every day just to see if I see somebody working. Nope. No one's in there doing anything. And I know you're going to speak to us, but if um, you could just let us go if you're not going to tell us that those kids are going to be staying there, because I know it's two rooms there for them. No, nobody, anybody, somebody? No, because the meeting was supposed to be the 20th, but they put that off with no date. Excuse me, we'll meet at uh, our side on the 20th. They said, then we, nothing. They don't give you no rain check, no date, no save the date, no nothing. And I don't think that was I don't think that was appropriate. And Dr. Janey, and I saw you at the Prudential at the inauguration. You told me if I ever need something to call you, I've been calling all month. I've been calling all month. Nobody ain't returned my call yet. They could text me anything. Just let me know something what's going on with my son. Because if I don't care about my son, I know you don't care about him. Sierra Hooker. You say what's my name? I'm just telling you. Okay. Are you? Are you I don't want you have some time no, left, Miss Hooker. I'm waiting to finish. I only had one question. What are y'all going to do about the fifth graders at Belmont Run? Anything else is irrelevant to me, because I got to worry about what my son going to do for the next year of his life. For one year, you want to send him to Arts High? Arts High? No, just leave him there for one more year. Why they can't stay there one more year? They not even getting ready for graduation. So what are they going to do with them kids? Now it's mandatory summer school. Of course it's mandatory summer school at Belmont Run, because you done took one fifth grade and put him into another fifth grade class, and it's 35 kids in one class. He can't get the cooperative education. He going to summer school, mandatory or not, he going to get a little bit more help. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hooker. Please remain afterwards. There will be a representative from the district to talk to you, Ms. Hooker. No, you will, let me tell you this. There will be a representative from the district after this meeting who will discuss this situation with you. Uh, the district will set up a meeting. Well, we're we doing it tonight. I, I, I wasn't privy to what happened, what was supposed to happen on the 20th, but I can tell you we're going to deal with that tonight. There will be folks here to talk to you after this meeting. There will be a meeting within the next week uh, with parents and concerned community about the situation at Belmont. So thank you very much, uh, Ms. Hooker. Next speaker. Aaron Roberts. Maureen Robinson. I'm on the, it's on, okay. My name is Maureen Robinson and I'm the building rep at Wetside High School. However, I don't have a uh, long speech. I just want to uh, say a special thanks to the superintendent for stepping up to the plate in the public interest of handicapped citizens. He was to uh, Westside High School um, on Friday. Uh, him and the uh, county superintendent. I would also like to say a special thanks to our security um, team under the leadership of Officer Colors over there and Mr. Baskerville. They are doing a fantastic job. The halls are much clearer and the fighting is down to a minimum. Our principal continues to be highly visible on all floors. There has been marked improvement at Westside High School in all areas. And I'd also like to, know, like, like, like to say to you, um, Dr. Daney, if it's not broke, don't fix it. There's a lot of improvement, like I said. 
And the lady you had over here, Miss Breeden, I want you to know that I, I attend her church. She can sing. You talk about a choir. You want a choir? She can sing and preach. She's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Ramon Polanco. <laughs> Veronica Williamson. Don Donna Jackson. Here we go. Good evening. Let me first say I love you. It ain't personal. This business for me. Y'all deal with it as a business. I deal with it as a business. Billion dollars worth of money here, so I gotta fight for all of it because I know the mismanagement that's going on. We're paying $1,600 a day for those kids to be in Kearney, bring them back to Newark. We got enough empty buildings, enough empty classrooms for those kids from the East Ward to be housed in Newark. We don't have to waste that money sending them somewhere else. You talk about budgetary constraints, that could keep the sacks working. First, oh, easy, easy. We in this dilemma now because we have several people in several areas that don't do what they're supposed to do. Clearly understand that. Everybody is not working up to their full potential. I'm so glad, though, that we got everybody nervous. I love everybody in this audience, but my question to all of you are, where you been for the last six months? We knew this was coming. We knew when Krispy Kreme got in, and Shavar, if he want to sue me, I'll take it. I done called him in the paper, on the news, so let him come on. We knew when Krispy Kreme got in, what he was going to do. And he's doing it. Nobody in this district, now I'm talking to all of y'all up here and everybody in this audience, has said nothing to the governor, has said anything to Dr. Janey, has said nothing to Mayor Booker in regards to the cuts that are here. This is all being done in-house with full collaboration and trend. Whatever we ask for here, that's what they're giving us there. We under state control. This ain't nothing new. You getting rid of folks because you want them. Some principals was allowed to tell you what teachers they want to get rid of. Other teachers, you told them what they was going to do, Miss White. Some folks in this district tenured are being moved out. Now, if they was the bad ones, wouldn't have a problem with that. But you still letting Malik, Rasul, Jane, and Beth keep working. They ain't been doing no work for the last 20, 15 years. You still got them working. You had some folks testify here tonight that ain't doing no work. And y'all know how Donna Jackson is, I don't got a problem. When the people do their job, I give them their report card at the end of the year next month, y'all know how I do. I been here next month with my pink papers. And I let folk know that ain't doing the job, they ain't doing the job. Dr. West may be visible at Westside, but it ain't where it should be, my child go there. Ain't where it should be. Track team at Westside, Dr. Janey, you paying for them to go to North Carolina or not? $4,500 ain't a bit much. You can write a personal check yourself. I think that it is outrageous at the economic time that we are that you got these young kids on the track team out in the community now raising money to go to North Carolina next month, and they are the only school in Newark. There may be one child from Science High School that is able to go to the Nationals to compete. I think it is abominable that you spend the money you spend for the food here, the money you spend for food in your office, the money you spend for food in Ms. White's office, okay, that we cannot pay for these students to do that. Because guess what? Five of those kids on the West Side track team, they're going to college on scholarship. Not a check you wrote, not a check Shavar wrote, not a check Ms. Wright wrote, on their own merit. So I think at this point, you could at the least put up $4,600, like I said, personal check, district check, don't matter to me. I called you last Thursday, you didn't call me back. So I don't know what you're gonna do. So I'm asking you now publicly, you need to take care of that. And you need to take care of any school in this district. Kindergarten to 12. Any of our children, Dr. Janey, since you're taking responsibility for this district, that make it to compete on a national level in anything, soccer, debate, te uh, tennis, checkers, I don't care what it is. We should make sure they get there because we have the money. At the end of the day, are we making the right decision, Dr. Janey? No, we're not. 
Now, you and Miss White got a little attitude with me. I don't really personally care. If you cared about these kids, you would make the right decision. You would include these parents. You would include the community. And up until this point, Dr. Janey, you have not. So next week, guess what? Because this board won't do it, the state board is coming. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. I will say the superintendent assures me and will say this to the community that those children from Westside will make that trip. So we want to make that very clear. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. Thank, thank you, Ms. Jackson. I love you, and I love everybody here. Uh, and I love these children even more. Do we, ha do we have any old or new business? Um, Shabar. OK. Shabar. Uh, Mr. Jeffries. Uh, uh, we'll first go to, uh, to Ms. Spade. In reference to the um, personnel committee, on last week um, I met with um, Ann Miller and she stated that the civil service workers received their um, letters on Monday. Um, and I talked to a couple of staff members later on that week. Half of the staff members that did receive the civil service uh, letters did not even know that they were civil service workers. So I just, we need to clarify that. I know it's some parent liaisons, some security guards that didn't even know that they were civil service workers. And in reference to the um, positions that, um, the non-tenure positions, any positions that, would, that we had layoffs in, uh, my concern is that I know we have to have do rehires in some positions, but I'm just making sure that any rehires that we do, it be in, in the district employees that we have laid off instead of hiring outside the district. So. Thank, you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Spade. Vice Chair King. Uh, Dr. Miller. Um, I'd be happy to comment. Um, every civil service employee in the district did get a notice, the general notice. Um, and the ones that we could not get hold of, we had to mail out. So some did not get theirs on Monday. We had to wait to see if we could find them, and then we mailed the ones that we couldn't find. So. Yeah, they, they did receive it, but they didn't even know they were civil service workers. Yeah. So just the mis miscommunication, I guess, with that. Yeah, that's, sure. that's an issue, because okay. there are so many of them. Um, with regard to hiring back teachers, uh, certainly it would be our ten intention that if we have the opportunity to do that, to reach right back out to our very favorite teachers that, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair King? Yes, uh, I just want to make a few comments in reference to SACS. I just want to say, and I think we all can attest to the fact that all of us have been affected in one way or another, whether commun um, our family, friends, or just seeing in the community to, in, ter in terms of the devastation of drugs. So I don't think anyone has a monopoly on terms of who cares the most. When you see the board members up here, and I'm going to speak specifically for myself because a lot of times I hear things and people assume and say people don't care, and that really bothers me because this is nothing new in our community. This is something that some of us have been fighting long before we people come up here and speak for many, many years. So we want to do the best because there are kids and because we do care. So I just want to clear that part and that anything, it's nothing wrong with constructive criticism and it's nothing wrong with even getting emotional. But I do say, don't say things that are not true and don't be disrespectful because we want to not only treat people the way we want to be treated, we want to be role models for our kids so they can know how to be, so they can grow and flourish in this world that they're competing with people all over the world. With hearing, with um, talking to many parents, community people, we understand that we need to be able to have parental involvement. I heard over the years um, we need to make the school more um, parent friendly. We want parental involvement. 
We want community involvement and the business's involvement. So tomorrow, at 5 o'clock at Two-Seater Street, we started something to raise parental involvement. And all of those who want to come, now this is particularly for those who help, want to help make sure that our community is involved. I think one of the parents said it in um, the audience, and I'm, I know right now I'm speaking to the choir, but if we have almost 40,000 students, just imagine the parents that represent those students and community involved, no matter what board meeting we come to, what, no matter what football game we go to, no matter what the problem is, if we came out strong, if we can agree on that, we can help solve the problem. Absolutely all of us are responsible. And we here, and let me just also say, the board members don't get paid to come here. They don't get paid to go to the meeting. They come here because we care about the kids. This is our community. We, this is our community. That's why we come. These are our children. And we know the devastation of not getting an education. We know about drugs. We know all those things. So that's what we're fighting for. So once again, I want to say for those who are interested in help building community involvement, there will be a meeting tomorrow at Two Cedar Street on the 10th floor. All are welcome. But the purpose is parental involvement. And if you have ideas, once, a, and once again. Ms. Jackson. Excuse Ms. Jackson, me. please, please, but, please, but the point, Ms. Jackson. This is, this is what I'm saying. Let me just say this. I'm, I'm you. This is not new to me. And if I didn't announce it, I announced it last, last board meeting and I had people to sign up. And some people did sign up. So don't say if I didn't announce it this week. It's because what I'm doing is sincere. It's not show. No, let me finish. Let me finish. I listened I listen to you. I didn't interrupt you. And I really, I really would hope that you would be respectful and not interrupt me. But you're talking while I'm, I haven't finished. Ms. Jackson, Ms. Jackson, the vice chair has the floor. Please, please, Ms. Jackson. The vice chair, continue, please. And like you always say, and like for the rest, this is not personal. This is serious. And, I'm, and like I said, it wasn't just tonight. We have a list, and we inform the people who signed up, and I'm just saying it again tonight. All of you who are interested in to increasing parental involvement, I welcome all of you. And that is the purpose of that meeting. I know just like in some communities where it's packed, things happen differently. So I'm just asking you, all of you, those who are interested for that particular reason, you all are welcome. Thank you. Ms. And I didn't get in contact. You're absolutely right. You're the only one, and I'm, I apologize for that. You, I did have the list, but I, you, you're absolutely right. One thing, I don't have to lie or anything. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And you're absolutely right. Mr. Lewis. Mr. Lewis. I want to first uh, piggyback on the vice chair. She's correct. We don't get paid for this position. Matter of fact, I think I bust it to every meeting in this city or walk it to every meeting in this city. But I also wanted to bring up a few issues. Last year, this administration promised us that we would not go down the same road as we went through last year with the new hiring um, vice principals and principals, it will not be posted at the last minute. This year, we found ourselves down the same road. Uh, we do not, I, I stated this last year, we do not want to just hire a VP come August and then give them two weeks to prepare themselves in order to get ready for the school year. So I asked the district, you promised us last year, I ask that you please fix this situation because this is about our children and this is about getting our schools together for next year. And how can we expect somebody to do 100% in two weeks, get themselves ready in order to help um, operate a building? Also, um, I, I emailed uh, the, um, Chairman Jeffries about the layoff list. Um, 
you said you said you didn't know if we can get the layoff list and not the people that's on the layoff list. However, I contacted Trenton today, and I talked to the NJ, NJSBA, and they said we can get the layoff list. The board members are um, allowed to see the layoff list and see the names that's on the layoff list. They said that is part of the Oprah. We are allowed to see this information. So I request this administration to give me that information by Friday. Also, food service workers. Last March, uh, we had a meeting, and when the food service workers was talking, at the end of the food service talking, uh, Dr. Janey responded and said that the food service workers will not be affected by the layoff. I was notified today that 35 37 food service workers have received pink slips. Also, civil service. Food service workers, 15 of them passed the civil service exam. By law, after 90 days, we have to change their status in the system. These food service workers' status was not changed in the system. So I encourage this administration to check this information because that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Also, respect. I understand what we said as board members. I also understand what the community said. We all need to come on one accord and respect each other because you elected us to represent you. We try our best to represent you. We, we can disagree. I must say we must agree to disagree, but we also need to know how to sit at the table and eat at the same time. Thank you. <clears throat> and, and, I, and I will say uh, to respond to one thing, uh, with all due respect, Mr. Lewis, while you were calling Trenton, if you would have just called me, I would have told you that you will get that list. So all you had to do would have just called me back, and you would have had the information. There's no need to call Trenton. You could have called me, and you would have gotten the answer, which is you will get that list. Any, any other uh, points uh, before we have a motion to adjourn, Dr. Miller? Could I, could I just address a couple of the points that Mr. Lewis made? We do have uh, vice principal openings posted on the website. Um, interviews are occurring, ongoing. So that's, I'm not sure, maybe it's because they're all online now. Um, but uh, those are happening. So. No, all, I, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is um, about the openings and uh, about the posting. The posting just happened last week or a week before last. So we now in May. We, we, the deadline was, what day was the deadline? I think we've extended it because we've had quite a few openings. Okay, so say the deadline is the middle of June. That means we don't start interviewing until July. That means the top three don't come before the superintendent until August. That means that the superintendent don't make the decision to the end of August and the person don't start to September 1st. That leave us in the dilemma and leave us between a hard rock. Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen. When we have multiple openings like that, we can go um, ongoing. And so we actually are selecting vice principals right now. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Do we have a second? I want to ask one question. Is the we, uh, Mr. Lewis, we actually have a motion that um, uh, we have uh, uh, Ms. Spate raise the motion. So we have to, uh, as a parliamentary matter, we need to proceed with that. Do we have just, a second? I just want to, I want to. Mr. Lewis, we have a motion that's been made as a parliamentary matter. We just have to follow through with that. We can, we can vote, vote, vote that down and give you an opportunity uh, to raise any additional concerns you have. Uh, but we do have to parliamentary wise go, th go through with that. Do we have a second? Second. We can have discussion on that. Okay, all in favor? Okay, anyone opposed? Okay, meeting is adjourned.